Ugh, YouTube only allows 10 minute parts. And I haven't found a way to use this Mac to cut up uh, the video into 10 minute segments using a giant hole. So for now, I'll just record 10 minutes, shut it off, and then record it again. So where was I? Ah yes, we were talking about Cauchy sequences. So definition. A sequence. Xn. If all Xn in the set of rationals is Cauchy. If after a point for any epsilon greater than zero. So it's like convergence, but not, not exactly. And for n, comma, n, two integers greater than n, then xn minus xm be less than epsilon. Meaning that the sequence will eventually be cluttered up together within an epsilon distance of each other when it's greater than an integer n. So, but we just realized that this definition of Cauchy, it is not generalized. We can actually make, you can actually define distance under a, uh, a general distance function, but we'll go on that till later on. So this is just a definition of Cauchy in the rationals. So how do we start building the real numbers? In order to do that, let's define the real numbers as the set of all Cauchy sequences. <coughs> now, we have, now let us, how do we define them? Now, we have a universe of Cauchy sequences. Let's partition that universe into equivalence classes. Now, if you've done algebra before, you know that we can, there's this well-known fact, well, maybe that doesn't fall under algebra. Oh. Hmm. Maybe set theory, but I've right, first learned in algebra. Well, we can, def we can partition a universe into disjoint sets called equivalence classes, where everything inside that class, and all representatives within a class, are equivalent to each other. Now, let us, but we have to define an equivalence relation. We have to make sure that it fulfills three properties. Transitive property, something that's equivalent to something, that's equivalent to another thing. First and the last thing should both be equivalent to each other. The symmetric property, if, I'm, if one thing's equivalent to another, that is equivalent, that other thing is equivalent to the thing that we we're just talking about. And lastly, should fulfill, it, sh it should be equivalent to itself. Many proofs when you do work with equivalence classes, all you need to do is show that two equivalence classes are equal. Take a representative from one class, representative from another class. If they are equal, or if they're equivalent under our equivalent relation, then the, then the two sets, the, then the two classes are the same equivalence class. So for Cauchy sequences, <coughs> let's say two sequences, x, n, y, n, Cauchy sequences are equivalent. Let's say that's xn. That's denoted by tilde. Yn. If the limit of n as it approaches infinity of xn minus y n equals zero. <coughs> That's where we're going to define our equivalence relation, which is good. All right. Now, we always have to check when we define something, if it's well-defined, meaning, does it contradict 
the, the rest of the world. <coughs> and as I said before, we have to make sure that this definition fulfills the uh, equal to itself, the transitive property, and the symmetric property. <coughs> and also, when we define the reals, I forgot to mention, we also have to define, because the reals is a field, you also have to define two things for a field, a multiplication and an addition. We have to make sure that it fulfills all the field properties, all the axiom properties are fulfilled, uh, the addition, the, the commutivity, the, there's an identity, all those things. We have to make sure that the multiplication axioms are fulfilled. Commutative, associative, non-tribunality, all those things. But those are very trivial. I mean, in this case, just the trivial in the term that it's very easy. And to prove that this equivalence relation is actually an equivalence relation. Well, this is just a simple, just, just xn minus xn as if n approaches infinity. It's, gonna, it's always equal to itself. It's, you subtract, it equals to zero. Uh, for the transitive one, you will end up using the triangle inequality, which is one of the big inequalities that you have to know. As long as Cauchy and, oh, there's quite a bit. But I will probably prove those online. Now, <coughs> uh, Koshi, see if it is. Okay. Oh, by the way, R is defined as a set of all Koshi sequences. And I can't write. And we can partition the real numbers into equivalence classes of Koshi sequences. So, for example, there'll be, and call that, all right. So, call that Cauchy sequence the point that it converges to. That's, that's right. We should call it that. All right, before we do that, the reals, we define the multiplication. So, we can always take representatives and say that Fn, and have that represent the group. I mean, they represent the class. If xn is in the set of a real number, let's call it x. x is a real number, or the equivalence class. So this is a sequence in the equivalence class x, and a sequence in the equivalence class y. And x comma y are in the set of R, then we define an addition to be, let's say this, this is all the equivalence class that's equivalent to xn plus yn, and define multiplication same way, except with multiplication now. So all Cauchy sequences that are equivalent to this representative is the equivalence class. <coughs> okay. Now let's now I'll go on to the next verse.